Hi everyone, it's Jonathan here from Tradewise and this is my monthly update video for February 2022. Um, it's been a very, very busy month this month with a lot going on. Um, the global outlook is not looking fantastic with the pandemic still hanging around and uh, obviously the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, but overall, actually, investments are still holding up quite well. I'm going to be talking about all of my investments, uh, as I always do. But actually, there's a lot uh, of positives and a lot to look forward to still um, with everything that uh, I'm holding currently. So lots of news uh, to let you know. I'm going to be giving you some information on Weave and where that project's up to. Um, Gala Games is pushing on to whole new levels and I want to cover that. Yield Nodes is looking fantastic. So lots and lots to go through in this video. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you could give me a like, uh, that would really, really help the channel to grow. All right, but with all that being said, let's just crack on with the monthly update. Please read the disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video should be taken as financial advice. The content in this video is for general information purposes only. Please make sure you do your own due diligence and if necessary, seek independent professional advice. Thank you. All right, so if you just have a quick look at the uh, the current outlook, this is the uh, BTC against USDT chart. And yes, cryptos are pulling back and valuations pretty much across the board are, um, are much lower than they were just a few months ago. But actually considering um, what's been going on in the world in the last few weeks, it's actually um, been holding up pretty well, I think. So if we just go to the daily, um, one of the biggest news events obviously recently was the um, Russian invasion of Ukraine. That happened just five days ago. But you can see that actually Bitcoin held up pretty well from that. I think the markets had already sort of priced in uh, what was going to happen by that point. And the price just seems to be um, finding a lot of support at around 30,000. So I think it might well continue on, on the downward trend for a little bit. It doesn't concern me too much. I think it's just getting ready for its next move up. I can't see us particularly getting back to um, some of the lower levels of like 20,000 or so on. I think if we do start to get pressure towards 30,000, I think we'll get a strong bounce off that point. But really looking ahead to, to what might impact the price of crypto, I think this year is probably going to be the year of regulation. I think we'll finally see the big economies, especially the US and Europe, um, announcing what their regulations are going to look like around cryptocurrency. And this, this will be huge. I think it's going to be important. I think it's actually a positive step overall um, for regulations to be clarified. Maybe if they're particularly harsh, the regulations will have an initial uh, negative impact on the crypto space. And a lot of companies obviously will be then looking to try and align themselves so that they're compliant with the regulations. But I suspect that the regulation won't be, uh, won't be too bad. And I think most crypto projects will be able to work alongside the regulators. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. Time will tell, of course. I actually th feel like the Western countries like the US and Europe may see an opportunity in crypto because the technology is so powerful. I think that while countries like China are trying to restrict it, there's undoubtedly huge opportunities for economies um, to grow with crypto rather than trying to fight against it. Now, one thing that does concern me a little bit is that um, with all the restrictions that are being imposed on Russia at the moment, the strength of their currency is dropping quite significantly. And, you know, there's people talking about perhaps crypto will be used as an alternative currency. Now, I don't see that as being a good thing because... What the other global superpowers are trying to do right now is to restrict their economy and restrict their ability to trade. And so if it's seen that, that crypto is a way out uh, for Russia to still be able to move funds effectively and, and to continue on almost business as usual, then they may impose some stricter regulation in the short term just to try and rein in a little bit what Russia is actually able to do. So I'm definitely keeping an eye on that. That could be a slight spanner in the works, I think. But I think generally the, the regulation will be a good thing. We're expecting uh, Mika or MICA, which is the EU's uh, crypto regulation. They're already about a year overdue uh, with delivering that regulation, but it's, it's definitely in the final stages. So, you know, it could be any day now or it could still be a few more months, but I definitely see it on the horizon. And then I think once that's out of the way, I think uh, the crypto space could be due for an explosion of new funds rushing in, albeit uh, in initially the regulation may cause some pullback and a little bit of fear in the market. But I think that overall the, the sector will, will embrace it and, and just move ahead, making sure it's compliant and able to kind of push on to the next phase. So overall, at the moment, I feel like uh, Bitcoin is, is holding up pretty well, actually. Uh, but I do think that later this year we'll be seeing all-time highs. Uh, and I'm holding out for $100,000 uh, 
Bitcoin valuation and hopefully that will filter through. I'm sure it will to all the other projects that uh, we're holding at the minute. So let's talk a little bit about Weave. I'll update you with where we're up to um, with this project. So we're moving full steam ahead. Our dev team are working extremely hard and in integrating as many different platforms and currencies as we possibly can. We're now actually in the beta testing phase. So we've actually opened up uh, to allow, we've got about 150 beta testers that are testing out the strategy builder. That's going really, really well. So we might well be opening the doors to some more beta testers ahead of the actual launch of the actual pro side of the platform, which will be within the next week or two. So it's all looking good on that side. We've got a ton of partnerships that, that we've been announcing. Our community size is is growing nicely. Um, and you can see on, if I go over to CoinMarketCap, we're currently ranked at 6,038 across all different cryptos listed on CoinMarketCap. The same as 17,859 cryptos ranked, so we're actually already in pretty good order. But we're so early in this, I mean, still don't underestimate just how early we are. We haven't even launched yet. Even once we launch, we're going to have campaigns we're going to be pushing to get the strategy build out to a, a much wider audience. But even then, you know, we don't expect the kind of mass adoption phase to start for quite a few months yet. So you guys that have been following along so far, you're so, so early into this. Our market cap, we're going to be adding our um, market cap based on the circulating supply, the coin market cap and coin gecko so that you can follow along. But we're probably only at about four million US dollars market cap, which is tiny, absolutely minuscule compared to some of the projects that we're going to be competing against. So there's huge, huge scope for us to grow. We haven't really been listed on any exchanges yet. We're still just available on PancakeSwap, but we will be um, getting listed on exchanges as we go through the year. That will help with our volume. It will help with, with people getting straight into the token from exchanges rather than having to sort of use MetaMask and so on. And so not only is the, the token, I think, attractive itself, but also we work very, very hard on use cases and we are looking at further use cases to be added later in the year as well. So there's definitely a lot of reasons to be holding uh, the Weave token. And as I say, like we're just so, so early on in this project. There's a whole lot of great stuff um, coming. Now, one bit of a uh, little bit of alpha that I wanted to give you guys is that we had our staking and liquidity pools audited just recently. Um, so these audits are hugely important just to check that the, the funds are secure and there's no kind of security flaws in the code or any uh, possible exploits or anything like that. Um, we're going to be releasing that um, so that everyone can see the audit just um, in the coming days. We'll, we'll attach a copy of it to the website. But basically, the audit passed with flying colors. Both the staking and the liquidity pool are incredibly secure. They basically rate them in terms of like the, the, the urgency um, at any kind of issues that they find. There was absolutely no kind of severe or even like moderate to high risk um, issues found. Really, all they found was just um, some suggestions around things like efficiency. So, so perhaps how we can uh, tweak the code a little bit to make it a little bit more efficient. And efficiency basically just means lower gas fees. Now, now the team are always looking at, at those kind of things anyway to try and make sure gas fees are as low as possible. Uh, but, but little things like that get picked up and, and they're all fine. You know, the dev team can have a look at them and consider whether or not it's worth changing the code to implement them. But the main thing is that the that the vaults are very, very, very secure. And hopefully the whole community will just take um, heart from the fact that, uh, yeah, absolutely no security issues were found at all with the staking contracts. So if you're interested in having a look at what that looks like, keep an eye just on our social media channels. We'll announce when we just publish um, the document and we'll add it, as I say, as an attachment to the website and you can have a look over it um, at your own leisure. Uh, now, for those of you that are involved in Weave, maybe you hold some of the tokens, maybe you're staking, maybe you're really passionate about the project. I do get asked a lot, kind of what can people do to help out? You know, is, is there ways that people can kind of help to spread the word? One thing that we did do recently um, in our Discord channel was that we added a, a new channel into the community server, which is um, social engagement here. Now, what we're asking people to do is, um, if you come into this channel and you just go to the pinned post at the top, you can press the flag here and you'll get notifications when we share anything on social media that, that would be good to get a bit of a boost. So any kind of social media tweets like this where maybe we would just want to give it a few more likes and follows and things like that and retweets, 
it just helps us when we're trying to get the attention of influencers in particular. So this was something that anyone can do and it really, really just um, will help us just to get the word out. So if you're not already in Discord, I do I, I do definitely encourage you to come into Discord. It's a great community. You can chat about the project in there more broadly, but you can also, as I say, help out um, with just getting the word out there on Weave. Um, so far, it's working really, really nicely and we will have more and more content just being added where you can just, just quickly take a very small amount of action by way of a like or a retweet, but it will definitely, when we multiply that by the whole community helping out, it will have a really good impact on our social media campaign. So if you're able to help us out with that, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, make sure you're in the Discord and make sure you do just follow along uh, with what's happening in that social engagement channel. Just also wanted to note that anyone that's still got some funds still in the original the free token drop pool, which is what we did throughout the month of December, there's only a small amount in there, uh, but I think people maybe aren't aware that they need to withdraw. Um, there's, there's maybe just two or three people that have got their funds still in that free token drop you need to withdraw those so that we can get this closed off we won't close it while there's any funds in there but um, anyone that's just not withdrawn all of their funds come back here and you can connect your metamask wallet and withdraw funds there's videos on also how to get into the the staking and liquidity pools as well um, so any of you that either haven't bought the token yet or haven't set up your staking and, and lp the rewards are great and don't forget that over time your your actual multiplier will go up which means that you know you'll essentially have a heavier weighting in the pools over time. So the quicker you can get into those pools, um, the better. So there's, there's lots of content on the Weave channel on how to actually get set up with those types of things. Also, if you're not still understanding fully what, what the actual project is about, this video here that we launched recently, with the infinite possibilities one, will really help you understand the scope of the project and just how powerful what we're trying to do is. It's, it's a very, very unique project. There's nothing like Weave just out there at the minute. And so we're, we're super excited to, to be showcasing what our protocol is actually going to be able to do. So this video, again, is one that you can share as well. So if you help, want to help get the word out, this video is definitely the one to do it. We've already got a really good number of views. So our view count is going up really, really nicely but it's definitely one that we want to um, get out there as, as much as we possibly can. So that's pretty much it for Weave. As I say, we're still super, super, super early. I wanted to give you guys, uh, get you involved as early as I possibly could to give you the best chance uh, of making great returns, but you've definitely not missed the boat. If you've not been able to get involved in crypto just yet, you've not been able to buy the Weave token just yet, then definitely just follow along with the videos or join the Discord and you can just ask for a bit of help on how to get into the token because this year is going to be really, really explosive for us. We've got so much planned. We haven't got started yet. So <laughs> it's going to be a big, big year um, for Weave. And then speaking of big years, let's have a look at Gala Games because Gala Games have kind of just gone to whole new levels, basically. I've been a huge fan of everything that they've done so far. And, you know, I love what they're doing in the gaming sector. They're now talking about disrupting other sectors as well. And, and so they've actually announced um, a huge investment, a $5 billion investment overall into, uh, into different sectors. So $2 billion of the investment is going to go into the gaming sector. So that will be to allow them to develop more games, which is huge for us as node owners, for example, or anyone that's holding the token. It just shows you that, you know, this company is firstly very well funded, but secondly, still just getting going. So I see still huge, huge potential for the gaming side, but the other sectors that they're getting involved with, they had a huge launch, which I'm sure you'll have, you'll have seen something about, which was Gala Music. So they're actually introducing a concept now called Listen to Earn, which I don't quite understand exactly how this will all work yet, but they have been selling Gala Music nodes which um, they've just taken from the store, but they were selling for, I think it was $1,200 uh, per node, which is which is really good compared to, I suppose, the, the grandfather nodes, but the mechanics aren't going to be the same as the grandfather nodes. So I think if it was something where I thought, I thought the opportunity was at least as good as the grandfather nodes, I probably would have put a review out during the month of February as soon as I'd um, heard about them. But I, I do think that the opportunity is not quite as good, so that they're not grandfather nodes. I don't think they're going to earn coins or NFTs quite the same way as the grandfather nodes did. And basically the earning potential doesn't look as great with the Gala Music ecosystem overall. So the way that it seems like it's going to work is that the grandfather nodes will eventually be used for uh, like the decentralized network to allow um, the hosting to be done, which is, which is definitely similar to the Gala Games nodes. But in order to earn, you need to pair them with music NFTs. So they did a launch with 
Snoop Dogg, which is a great start, by the way. I mean, in terms of um, getting big names into the ecosystem, they've started very, very well. And I think there's going to be a lot more big names to come. So I definitely feel like they're going to get the, the quality of artists in there. But the NFTs um, are, are quite really quite pricey. So the Snoop Dogg ones were $5,000. And it's not as if you kind of own the music rights by having the NFTs. So really, you're kind of talking about just the ecosystem of the gala music and the gala games, rather than it being kind of like, you know, that, that you'll benefit whenever it's, it's streamed. So these artists um, are still putting out their albums and They'll still be played on, on the radio. They'll still be streamed through all, all the different music streaming services. And so for me, the earnings at this point aren't very clear. I do suspect that Gala Games will make a success of this. And I am excited by where they want to go with it. But I think without having the licenses and the kind of copyright attached to the NFTs, it kind of feels like the market might be a little bit too small if it's just going to be kept within the Gala Games ecosystem, for example. Having said that, it is quite interesting the way that they're considering ways to integrate the music into their games so that whilst you're playing a game, you know, you might be walking around Miranda's, but you might be listening to your Snoop Dogg NFT or you might be listening to someone else's Snoop Dogg NFT in the background. And then that might help to contribute to, to this listen to earn um, economy that they're talking about. So it is still a little bit unclear how it's all going to work and what the kind of earnings potential um, will look like. But I definitely think the music sector is an industry that is is ready um, to be transformed and, and improved and i can definitely see the nft market being really 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 appealing to both very popular big names in the music sector but also up-and-coming artists as well that, that want to get started and are struggling to get recognized or can't get good deals from the record companies so i definitely see a lot of potential for it and i am really excited about the project overall in the end i just bought one node just because i didn't really want to miss out and i think that the price of them will start to go up now that they've taken them off the market i think they'll they probably limit the supply and and certainly that the price of them will start to go up a little bit as well. I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on what happens with Gala Music, but at the, for the time being, I'm not particularly wanting to make any huge investments or anything into the project because I just want to see how it all kind of unfolds. But in terms of how it impacts Gala Games itself, um, I, I do think overall it's going to be very, very good for the project. Certainly in the short term, I think so, because... Um, unfortunately, whilst the Gala Music ecosystem will sit separate from Gala Games and it will have its own token, in the short term, Gala Games token is the token that's being used for buying the NFTs and basically just supporting the whole Gala Music ecosystem. In due course, Gala Music will have its own coin and that won't, won't sit kind of underneath the Gala Games coin. It will sit completely, entirely separate from the Gala Games coin. However, the coins will be interchangeable between the networks, which means that you could hold Gala Games coin and still buy Gala Music NFTs with your Gala Games coin. And so even longer term, I think that it's good news for the Gala Games token, but it is a shame that the Gala Music uh, ecosystem doesn't fall um, underneath basically like the grandfather nodes, for example. We won't be getting Gala Music coins for our Gala nodes. We won't be getting any kind of NFT drops or anything like that to node owners. But in the short term, I think hopefully they can announce some more artists and things before they get the Gala Music coin launched. And so that, you know, more people will be scooping up the Gala Games token just to be getting into the Gala Music ecosystem. But generally, you know, more of these things that can bring in the mass market, people that maybe weren't even thinking about crypto. But if their favorite artist is, is selling NFTs and they want to support that artist, then you know they'll be they'll be making their first delve into crypto, and, and this is exactly what the, the, the sector needs. I think music is absolutely ideal for this. Gaming, of course, fits, and, and I've been talking about this for a long time. How I think it's going to completely transform the gaming sector, but the music sector is is probably even bigger. I mean, whilst not everyone on the planet is a gamer, I think most people love music. I've never I've never heard anyone say to me that they just hate all kinds of music, right? It just seems ridiculous. Everyone likes some sort of music, even if they don't listen to it all the time. There's definitely um, different types of music that, that people can relate to. And, and most people actually are really quite passionate about music and different bands and artists and things that they want to support. So I think it lends itself really, really well to, to NFTs. And it'd be interesting to see how they can make that work. But I think if anyone can make it work, it's definitely Gala Games. 
and they're already well funded. So as I was saying before, of the $5 billion investment uh, that they want to make into different sectors, a billion dollars of that is going to go into this Gala Music project. And I think they've already got a very, very good number of uh, well-known artists to come into the ecosystem. So it's going to be really exciting following along with what's happening. A billion dollars is also going to be going into making films and distributing those. I'm guessing like as with a uh, a node network and NFTs as well, so that maybe it'll be like a watch to earn type scenario. So you can earn coins by sort of hosting film networks or parts of films or something like that. But definitely that the movie sector is what they're moving into uh, very, very shortly. And then I believe the other one is going to be theme parks. And I don't know whether that's like real life experiences. I mean, Galaverse just looked absolutely insane. Uh, what they did there was 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 remarkable uh, so whether it's going to be those kind of type experiences or whether it's going to be like a like virtual or maybe there'll be a bit of, cr of crossover into both but i think theme parks fits very well with the metaverse and obviously gala games are very much hoping to capitalize on all the buzz around the metaverse right now so it remains to be seen exactly how that will work but with a billion dollars worth of funding i'm pretty excited to see what that will look like so Gala Games really are just going from strength to strength, just huge, huge amounts going on. It's almost becoming a full-time job for me just to try and keep keep track of what's going on with Gala Games. They just always seem to be really, really pushing the boundaries. And, you know, I think some people are thinking maybe are they, are they going too fast or trying to do too much? I would say probably they're not because... A lot of what underpins this is is the blockchain and the NFTs and so on. They already have the experience and the expertise to uh, you know to create these NFTs. So you can see here, like the orbs, for example, these were these were beautiful um, NFTs. It's not that difficult, you know. If creators have the vision, so like BT had the vision for for these orbs, then Gala can easily create the NFTs and promote them to their marketplace. So yes, I'm sure there's a huge amount to take care of on like the legal side and things like that, moving into the music sector and so on. But I think these things fit nicely with the business model already. So I think they'll make a huge success of it. I'm really confident and excited by what they have to offer um, with these new sectors that they're moving into. And I do think overall it will be really, really good for the Gala Games ecosystem as well. Just as the, the Gala brand expands and becomes more of a, a sort of household name, I really do think that Gala will be one of the most well-known crypto and NFT uh, brands actually um, based off what, what they're moving into. If they can be successful in just one of the sectors that we'll talk about here, if they're hugely successful in either the music industry, the gaming industry, whatever, they will become a, a household name that people will talk about. And I actually think they've got a chance of being highly successful in multiple different sectors. And so that's why I was really, really excited to hear about uh, all these these changes and the way that they're expanding. So super exciting stuff. Um, I've, I've put an application in to go to the Galaverse in Copenhagen. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get a ticket for that. Let me know, any of you that uh, follow the channel that, that are also hoping to go, hopefully we can get together. We can maybe have like a trade-wise meetup and just get together have a chat about the gala game stuff but also yield nodes or weave or whatever you want to, to talk about so do drop me a comment or send me an email if you're hoping to go and uh, it would be great if we can all get tickets and and have a bit of a meet up there in copenhagen i think that's pretty much all the news there will be more stuff that i haven't covered just because there is so much stuff going on with gala games there's new games being announced all the time and I think they're currently at about 22 games in development, but you know you can see them keep dropping here, and we've got more to um, that are going to node votes very very shortly. Let's move on and talk about yield nodes now. So January was a really really strong month, actually slightly better than I was expecting uh, at 8% yield. So really looking good there. If we have a look at like the the past performance, you can just see I mean huge huge performance as compared to even just holding. Uh, Bitcoin or, or any other asset basically it's it's way way outperformed any of those different asset classes and it feels like it's still going very very strong I mean you know just having a look at if you'd have compounded from day one uh, you'd have been at 1,477 percent return with 5,000 euros being worth uh, a whopping 78,850 which is just huge huge returns you know compounding element really does uh, make this very very powerful but even if you hadn't been compounding you'd have still taken profit of nearly 20,000 euros uh, obviously that's since since its inception uh, in 2019 but you know 
it's amazing how quickly it goes. I've been in this investment for well over a year now um, and it's just gone, seems to be going from strength to strength. If we have a look at how the actual um, token is performing, well, one of the tokens anyway, I tend to look at Sapphire just to see how that token has been doing because it's a good indication of where funds have been coming in. Uh, and actually you can see, even though the crypto space has pulled back, uh, Sapphire Coin has done really, really well, pushing on to new all-time highs. And that just means that they're getting lots of funds in. There was actually um, quite a big YouTuber that started to talk about Yield Nodes about a month ago now. Um, and I think since then, a lot more people have been having a look at it and do, doing their due diligence on it and so on. And that, uh, in addition to them talking uh, more about institutional investment as well going forward, I think they definitely had uh, new audiences and and a lot of new money flowing in. Um, Stephen did suggest that there's uh, there's going to be another audit, which which they're saying that they want two audits a year uh, now, which is great. Stephen suggested to me that the audit will be in even better shape than when I last looked, and when I last looked, they were in really good shape. So so that it sounds like they're in even better uh, financial position. So in terms of uh, returns, I think obviously that will reflect, and hopefully we can stay above eight percent. It'd be great if we can get back above. 10% mark but I do think that they will be being cautious right now um, because the crypto sector in general is just um, pulling back and of course there's there's the Russia Ukraine situation you know all of its affecting markets so maybe they'll err on the side of caution and just keep lots of funds in, res in reserve but hopefully we'll see a really strong return for February and yeah, I mean, this just seems to just keep ticking over really, really nicely. And I, I do think they're they're pushing on to, to new levels now. And I'm just very, very happy still. I'm withdrawing half of my profits each month and compounding half. So it's really just a very, very easy, very sort of passive uh, investment. And of course, it has performed uh, extremely well as well. Um, I've not heard any more update on the white paper for their Decenemy. They are, they do sort of mention it in some of the monthly updates. And I know it's definitely something that they're still working towards. Um, of course, as soon as I hear anything about what the next phase is likely to be, um, then I'll be letting you guys know and doing some dedicated uh, videos on it. But for now, um, I think things just, uh, if anything, are as good as they've ever been uh, in terms of the, the, the funds flowing into it and the returns and everything like that. So I'm, uh, I'm still very, very happy and comfortable with uh, the way it's all going. Just to cover Doge Dash and Illuvium very quickly. So Doge Dash, I haven't really made any changes with. I'm just sat uh, with my funds in the staking pool. Um, I still like the way this project is going. Um, I think that they've found it a little bit more difficult to get the kind of mass market than what they originally anticipated. But it is a good team. It's a good game. Um, so I, I have a lot of confidence in Doge Dash and where they're heading with it. Um, so, the, you know, at least we know the game is legitimate and so on. We've just got to let them get on with it and um, get, get the marketing done and also to, to release more games. They've got at least one more game in development, uh, which I think looks really good. And they've also uh, pushing on now. I think they want to try and get into the game studio arena as well. So maybe they'll start bringing in some uh, some other games that they can sort of host on their network and become a bit like a Gala Games type thing where they're hosting other developers' games. Uh, that could be really interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just really sitting tight. They do do weekly AMAs now, so they're really transparent about things. If you're uh, wanting to know what they're up to and things, you can get join them. Uh, I think they normally stream on Twitter. You can join them on a Friday evening uh, and just see what the team's up to and what the what the vision is and what the current plans are, etc. So I, I do think, you know, uh, of all the projects that I look at, I still think they're a really strong team um, and, uh, yeah, a good game. And I'm still optimistic for them, albeit I think it's going to be sort of later this year before we see any kind of major move for them. So in the meantime, I'm just I'm just sitting with my funds in the staking pools. Uh, and Alluvium's very similar, really. So uh, Alluvium, I think overall, the project looks great. I think their team... Uh, is amazing. I, I do think this is probably the game I'm most excited about out of all of the play to earn ecosystems. The graphics look amazing. The storyline's excellent. You know, the NFTs will play a major part in it. They did have a little bit of a setback, which I covered last month, which has just meant that the land sale has been delayed. Uh, but again, this is a, a longer term project. This was always a longer term project for me, to be fair, because even like the staking rewards uh, have a vesting period of 12 months. So I always saw this as being like a long term hold anyway. That's definitely still the case. Um, I am hoping that they can get the land sales done, get some NFTs sold and 
really kind of move the hype uh, bar up a few notches again because uh, yeah after that setback I think that they they deserve to be recognized again really as one of the best projects out there so still really excited for Alluvium but uh, I've just got my funds still in the liquidity and staking pool so not really doing anything just letting the rewards uh, flow through and just compounding them as often as I possibly can. Lastly let's have a look at Pionex and the bots that I'm running these sideways markets are pretty good, especially for the grid trading uh, bot. The arbitrage ones, probably not the best time for the arbitrage ones. I should probably be pausing those, but they do still churn in some profit. But when markets have a, a strong pullback, then they can make uh, very small losses as well. So uh, definitely, I would say a, a good period for grid trading bots. Um, I've not really done very much with them since last month because generally I do just like things that are, are more set and forget but I do have quite a lot of profit locked in that I need to release and just get into new bots and basically just keep compounding because that's where a lot of the, the benefit is you know I've got quite a lot of, of profits on all of these that I just need to get out so that's one thing that I do need to do um, sorry I've not really kept up with this uh, as much as I was hoping but I've just been so busy with with weave and a few other things as well but yeah I'm just kind of letting them do their thing I, it's mainly because I'm quite comfortable with the way that they're actually working that I don't really log in very often I don't really feel like I need to sort of check them or be doing anything with them and the compounding part is kind of just a bit of a bonus on top uh, of the returns that they're that they're still locking in so my, my balance at the moment is uh, about thirteen and a half thousand dollars and I started with just over that amount with thirteen six ninety. But bearing in mind that I started these bots when markets were at pretty much all time highs. Um so a lot of that that is reflected in uh, the actual price of Bitcoin dropping off and I still feel like I'm way ahead of just holding Bitcoin uh, by running these bots. So Pinex for me is still running really, really nicely and I'm I'm really pleased with how it's going. And so that's just about it for this month. Even though there has been quite a lot of bad news around still um, over the last month, I think the, the projects that I've got funds in, I feel like there's lots of good news and very, very optimistic about the year ahead for them. Keep your eyes uh, peeled on both my, my YouTube channel and the Weave YouTube channel for some new videos coming soon. We're hoping to host an AMA uh, from Weave with the, with the co-founders so that people can just uh, quiz us on the project, how it's going and where we see the future and just ask any questions that you want. So keep your eyes peeled for that in due course and other than that just let's just stay patient with things and let things unfold and uh, work for us going forwards into this year thank you very much for watching i really really appreciate you all please make sure you give me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to leave a comment below and ask any questions that, that you might have or just let me know how your journey is going as well with what you're invested in and i'll be back soon with more videos thanks for watching and bye for now